when it went down. And he was going through, and that blind man, blind man, sat inside the wayside. Oh, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. People told him, be quiet. Jesus is coming through. You don't need to be talking. The more they told him to be quiet, the louder he got. He stopped Jesus in his track. And Jesus said, bring him to me. You, winners, can stop Jesus in his track. Because winners never, ever lose. But we still have to find a positive way. We are blessed to be able to come back together one more time. I do want to welcome everyone out to our service this morning. Hope everybody had a blessed week this week. I want to thank God for you in the sanctuary. You may be seated. I also want to thank God for those of you who are viewing by YouTube and Facebook. Again, we welcome you to the Lives of the Pentecostal Church. We thank God for allowing us to come back together again. The Lord has been good to us, and we come to worship and to celebrate him for his blessing and i'm not going to hold you up too much longer we're going to get ready to go into our service our devotional leader is coming at this time let's give the lord a hand of praise as he comes in jesus name <laughs> continue to give him praise thanks he is worthy to be praised Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Let us all bow our heads in prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And just lift your hand unto the Lord and just welcome the Holy Spirit in, in this place this morning. Welcome him into your heart. Praise the Lord. Welcome Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Just welcome the Lord into your heart. Welcome him into this place this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
Give the Lord some praises in the house this morning. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hey. Oh, oh, everybody ought to praise the Lord. Clap your hands, everybody. Clap your hands, everybody. Hey. Clap your hands, everybody.
live in sin. Jesus Christ died for my sin. And the blood of Jesus cleansed me from all sin. I am Christ-like. I am born again. And I have power over the devil. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. You may be seated. We honor the Lord for being here today. We thank him. Praise the Lord for going to the cross for our sins. Uh, we thank God for just giving his life that we may live. We give him all praise and all glory and all honor. We thank God for our pastors. We thank God for our assistant pastors. Uh, the ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God is so good to us. We honor the Lord for our deacons. Our chairman deacon, I thank God for him. He's here today. Our assistant chairman. Praise the Lord. And we just thank God for each and every one of you who come out to worship the Lord today. That's what I came to do. I came to magnify his name. I want to make him bigger. Because he is all powerful. He got all the power that we'll ever need. And I come to thank him for it. Praise the Lord. I'm not going to be alone the time of going on into the message. And the title of the message is Winners Never Lose with Christ. I said winners Never lose with Christ. If you got Christ in your life, you'll never lose. I say if Jesus is in there, because the scripture says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And if that power that raised Christ from the dead, if it dwell in you, it shall, it shall, it shall quicken your moral body. Winners never lose with Jesus in their lives. We're going to be talking to you from St. Mark, the fifth chapter, and I'm going to begin reading at the 21st verse, St. Mark 5 and 21, and again, winners in Christ. Never lose. And while you're looking for it, I want to tell you something. Losers never win. I said losers never win. I prefer to be a winner. And the Bible says in St. Mark, the fifth chapter, and I'm going to begin reading at that 21st chapter. And when Jesus was passed over again by ship and to the other side, much people gathered unto him. And he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet 
and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. And I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her that she may be healed. And she shall live. I want you to look at this word, shall. Now this man, he named Jairus, he, he had been working around the church. He was like one of the caretakers and the leaders of the church. And when he came to Jesus, he knew what words to use. You got to use the right word, folks. If you don't use the right words, you're not going to receive the right result. Now this man said unto Jesus, he said, my daughter, she, she's sick. And, and I need you to, to come and lay thy hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. Use that word always, people of God. The 24th verse said, and Jesus went with him. And much people followed him and thrown him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, she had suffered many things of many physicians. And she had spent all that she had and was nothing better but grew, rather grew worse. Then when she heard, I said when she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touch his garment. We're going to stop right there for a little bit. Here is Jesus. Now Jesus had been asked by Jairus uh, to come and lay his hands on his daughter. And as Jesus goes to lay his hands on Jairus daughter here come this woman with an issue of blood she had been issuing blood for 12 years you know that's a long time I said she had been she had been sick for a long time but can you imagine Jairus. Jairus is saying, I asked Jesus to come and heal my daughter. And here comes somebody stopping Jesus from doing what I asked him to do when he was coming with me. Folks, sometime you got to wait. Sometime you got to have some patience. Sometime you got to wait a minute. It don't always happen when you ask for it. Sometime you got to wait. You see, you can't outwait God. I'm reminded of what the preacher said on Friday night in the revival. He said something that stuck with me. He said, one day with Jesus, he counted as a thousand years. I want to say to the church family, I want to say to the people that are watching this telecast, your know, one day, it ain't over yet. I say, your know, one day, it ain't over yet. You still 
in that one day. Jairus, he's waiting for Jesus to come on. And can you imagine his little girl is sick? And you imagine here, this woman come to him and he's saying to himself, I will have fudge. I got to you for she got to you. And, and here you are. No, stop in your track. You, you, you don't stop in your track. In other words, she holding me up. This woman is holding me up. But this woman needed a miracle. This woman had heard about Jesus. This woman knew what she had been doing. It wasn't working. And if you've been doing something and it's not working for you, don't you know you need to change? Don't you know that what you're doing ain't working? The Bible says she had been to many physicians. She'd been to many doctors. In other words, she had spent all of her money on doctors. And you know when you go to the doctor, they're going to write you a prescription. Whether you're sick or not, you're going to get a prescription. If you don't stop by the drugstore on your way home, you're going to stop by there when they call you and say you're ready. This woman, she had spent all she had, but better, grew, grew, getting better, she got worse. But she came to Jesus when she heard about it. And isn't this something? She came behind and she touched his gum. Can you imagine? I don't want to come up front. I want to come from behind him. And I want to touch him. That's what she did. For she said in the 28th verse, If I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. Do you see it in your word? There we go again. These folks that are getting these miracles is using this word shall. In other words, somebody being put on the spot. And when you be put on the spot, you got to move. She said, I shall be whole. And look at what happened in the 29th verse. And straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt within her body that she was healed of that plague. Got to believe it. To receive it. She felt. She felt. She didn't did but touch him. He ain't even talking to her yet. But she touched him. See, that's what you got to do if you want to be a winner. You got to touch him. Don't wait for him to touch you. You touch Jesus. A winner never lose with Jesus. This woman felt within herself. Her blood was dried up. And Jesus... Many 31st. Immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? You know when somebody bump up against you. And you know when somebody touched you. This woman touched him. 
this woman touched him in a way where he felt. He felt the touch. I tell you, God is awesome. He is awesome. And his disciples said unto him, That is the mother to throne in thee. And that says, Who touched me? And he looked round and about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing was done, what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. She bring that confession on in there. You ain't never confess. If you're going to be a winner, you need to confess. You need to confess that Jesus is the Lord. You need to confess that he's your Savior. You need to confess that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know. Jesus. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but I know Jesus. I know him for myself. Because I found out a long time ago. If you want to be saved, he'll save you. The reason I know he'll save you, he'll save anybody. that want to be saved. He saved me. I say he saved me. And if Jesus will save me being a little old, little old nobody... He'll save anybody. He'll heal anybody. Here this woman is. She's telling me all about her trouble. Can you imagine? This woman is saying, Lord, I've been sick a long time. Jesus, I've been sick for 12 years. I've been had this issue of blood. I done been to many Positions, Lord. Lord, I done spent all my money. But I heard about you. And I heard that if I just believe, I would receive. If I just come to you, and if I touch you, I know, Lord, you'll touch me. She come in there, and she told him all about her troubles. And when she got through fessing up the truth, people, you got to be truthful. If you ain't done it, you just ain't done it. If you ain't doing it, you just ain't doing it. But you can do it. All things are possible with God. Now, with man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. See what he said. She told him about her troubles and everything. She done lost everything. And then her health was bad. She ain't got no more money. They done took it all away from her. But when she talked to Jesus, that's who you got to talk to. Talking to people ain't going to help you. You got to talk to Jesus. This woman had a little talk with Jesus. And when you, when you have a little talk with Jesus, he'll make everything all right. Jesus, he called her, he ain't called no woman no more. He said daughter. It's a whole lot of different in those two words. He said daughter, thy faith 
has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of that place. In other words, everything that that woman had lost, he gave it back to. Every dollar that she put out, every doctor that she had been to, every drugstore she had stopped by, every trip that she had made, all of it would give them back to her. People, if God give us every dollar that we done made, <laughs> I'm not even going now. While he speak, I'm in the 35th verse, that came one of the rulers of the synagogue house, certain which said, the daughter is dead. Why troubles thy the master any further? And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. You know, if you listen to people, they'll make you afraid. They'll change your belief. They'll tell you ain't nothing to that. They'll tell you that that don't work. Jairus is being told, ain't no need of you calling on Jesus. It's too late. He didn't get an attitude and said, Lord, if you had came on one, I told you. My daughter would have been all right, but you just slowed around. See, Jesus know what he's doing. He know what he's doing. Ain't nobody smarter than Jesus. Be not afraid. Believe. You can't have fear and faith. If you got fear, you ain't got no faith. If you got faith, you ain't got no fear. Jesus told him, I'm talking about a winner. I'm talking about a winner, people. If you're a winner with the Lord, you can't lose. And he suffered. I'm talking about Jesus. No man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. See, when you get ready to go work for God, you need some believers working with you. All them folks that following you and all them folks all around you, they're going to be a hinder to you. You need somebody that got faith. You need somebody that believe like you believe. And if you find somebody that believe like you believe, things are going to happen. Sometimes you got to pick them. You got to pick them. God ain't coming down here and pick nobody for you. You got to pick them. You know who have faith and who don't have faith. Because you're a winner. You're a winner. And a winner can't lose with Jesus. Here we go. And he cometh to the house. And the ruler of the synagogue sees the tumult. And them that wept and wail greatly. You know, you be around a lot of folk and they crying and going on and make you cry. Do me. I have to hurry them get out around folk like that. So now I be watching TV. And I ain't got no problem with no animal. I don't have no problem with no animal. But when they make it so sad, they make it so sad. You start feeling so, so sorry in your heart. Your eyes go to get filling up with water. 
Sometimes you got to cut it off. Sometimes you got to cut the TV off. Sometimes you got to step away from people that are faithless. Sometimes you got to step away from people that don't believe like you believe. Now, now everybody believe. Even the devil believe. But I'm talking about people that are winners. They believe that Jesus will see them through. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about somebody that love the Lord. I'm talking about somebody going to stand by your side. Somebody that with you. You know when somebody with you. Sometimes they'll tell you, I got you. You know I got you, sis. You know I got you, brother. You ain't got nothing to worry about. Because I got you. That's what Jesus is saying to the believers in him. He's saying, I got you. Because these people, they're being paid to cry. And the way I see back in the old days, somebody died, they had weepers. They come in. <laughs> and then when somebody look at them, they get louder. You know, like people do today. They be doing pretty good. And then somebody come and they look at them a little bit. And then they get louder. I've been to films. And people, they just whimp a little bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then when somebody come up there, maybe just touch them on the shoulder. Ah! They fall out. They act like they want to go over into the casket. They don't really want to go. Because if you just give them a little shell. When they get to the hole, give them a little shell to see how far they'll come back. Winners never lose. And when, I'm in the, I'm in the 39th verse. And when he was come in, he said unto them, Why make ye do this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleeping. She ain't dead, she's just sleeping. Well, you know they didn't believe him. They don't even believe him today. But I do. Everything he said, I believe it. These people love him to scum. But when he had put them all out, he talked his, take his the father and the mother of the dancer. Amen. And them that were with him, them three, you know, them power, his back up, his power. And he entered where the dancer was lying. Hey, we got to go where she at. Because Jesus knows she's not dead. Jesus knows that she's asleep. He knows you're not dead if you're not dead. He, he knows sometimes he got to touch you. And if you ever get touched by Jesus, it's a touch that you'll never, never, never forget. People, we are winners with Christ. He takes this mother and this father to the room where the daughter is. And he took the dance by the hand and said unto her, Tell her, come out. Which is being interpreted, dance, I say unto thee, Arise. The Master, the Almighty, the all powerful, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He's saying, Arise. 
When Jesus said, Arise, you got to get up. You can't keep sitting down. You got to get up. He said, Arise. Hallelujah. And straightway. I said, Straightway. Not a week later. Not a day later. But straightway. 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 Dancing the rose. Can you imagine her laying down in that bed? I don't know how long she had been there. But I know she had been there for a while because Jared, he done went and found Jesus. I don't know how long it took him. And then the woman that had issue of blood, she done stopped him. And then he had to have a conversation with her. And she had to tell him all the truth. You know, I, it take me a long time to tell y'all about me. It'll take a while for me to tell y'all about when I went down to the tent in Bonville, Georgia. I ain't going there, but it'll take me some time. He had got there. And when he got there, he had some people he had to put out. In the world, the world, he said, you can't go with me. And today, people, if we ain't right with God, we can't go with Jesus. If we ain't faithful, we can't go with Jesus. Got to be up to par. Got to be faithful. Jesus told her, he said, I say unto thee. I'm talking now. This is the big daddy here. This is Jesus. I say unto thee, arise. And if Jesus tell you to arise, you got to get up. You got to get up. I said, you remember when he, when he went down and he was going through and that blind man, blind man was sitting side the wayside. Oh, Jesus. That son of David, have mercy on me. People told him, be quiet. Jesus is coming through. You don't need to be talking. The more they told him to be quiet, the louder he got. He stopped Jesus in his track. And Jesus said, bring him to me. You, winners can stop Jesus in his track. Because winners never, ever lose. And losers never, ever win. He told her to arise. And straightway, the dancer arose and walk. She arose and walked. For she was of the age of 12 years. And they were astonished with great astonishment. Because they said it was all over. And it wasn't all over. So many people have said it was all over for every one of us. So many devils have said we weren't going to make it. So many people have said we weren't going to stay. So many people have said you ain't got no Holy Ghost. So many people have said you ain't got no power. So many people have said you are not saved. You don't know nothing about being saved. So many people have told you to your face. But you stood the test. I said, you stood the test. I said, you stood the test. And today, you got the power. You got the power. You got the power. You got the power to stay with it. They told me I wasn't going to make it. You may be seated. They told me I wasn't going to stay safe. 
Then they told me after Pastor passed, uh uh, all y'all gonna fall on your face. You know what they said about us? Cause when they talking about me, they talking about you too, cause we all one. They say, I give y'all a year. Y'all might last a year. You give you a year. Year went by, they had to move it up. They said, well, I'll give you a couple more years. Yeah. A couple more years passed by. We still ain't giving up. In January, Pastor B been gone 11 years. I got news for you. Jesus ain't gone. I said Jesus ain't gone. We looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And he said, praise the Lord, this girl was about 12 years old, and he charged them straightly that no man should know it and commanded that something should be given her to eat. He feeds you too. You know, I thought about we ain't eating right now, you know, but in homecoming week, we don't have a great revival. You know, on homecoming Sunday, we usually eat us. We have all kind of food. But because of this virus and all this stuff that's going on, we got to make some changes. A whole lot of things that we have done in the past. We won't be doing them in the future. Because until things get better, we got to stand the test. And if you got it, stay with it. If you know him, if you know just Jesus, you need to keep it going. You need to keep it going. You don't have to be in this building to keep it going. Because we hadn't been in it in, 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 in about 15 months. And we kept it going. We never missed a Bible study. We never missed a Sunday school. We never missed a revival. We never missed a service. Jesus! 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 He kept us going. We're going to turn you back in the hands of your pastor. Pastor Phelps. My time is up. Amen, amen. Let's give the Lord another hand of praise. Let's give Sing your pastor a hand of praise. Amen. Oh, yes, you may be seated. Again, we thank God for our service this morning. Hope everybody had a wonderful time. I got a lot out of the message that Senior Pastor ministered unto us. Anyway, we thank God again for our uh, service this morning. Thank God for everybody coming out. And at this time, we ask everyone to let us all stand. Everybody bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for allowing us to come together one more time. We thank you for this service. Mostly, we thank you for the word that came forth. And Lord, we pray as we leave that you encamp your angels around us all. Allow us all to reach our destination safely. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name.